Deep in the heart of the Atlantic Ocean lies a mystery that has captivated the world for centuries. For years, explorers and archaeologists have searched for evidence of a lost civilization that once thrived in these territories, and finally they have found it. Through careful examination of strange places that they found, scientists have identified a previously unknown group of human ancestors that branches off from our family tree. Surprisingly, this newly discovered sister group is found to be more closely linked to modern humans than the Neanderthals, altering our understanding of our evolutionary history. And here we are talking about the Atlantis civilization that were more advanced than we are today. No doubt about it, Atlantis was the most well-known incredible place in the olden times. Even though Atlantis disappeared suddenly, the story continued to be told and became even more popular over the centuries. As a result, this sunken island, which was initially not very important in Plato's writings, has become a significant part of our culture. According to various discoveries, Atlantis was an enormous island that was even bigger than Libya and Asia combined. It was inhabited by a special group of people who were half-gods led by mighty kings. They claimed to have descended from Poseidon, the powerful god of the seas. The Atlanteans took advantage of this connection and developed an advanced civilization, building massive cities at a time when the rest of the world was still in the Stone Age. Their good fortune was amplified by the fact that they lived in a land rich with resources, particularly valuable metals like silver, gold, and the highly prized orichalcum, a precious reddish gold metal. There have been many discoveries that reveal secrets of this mysterious ancient civilization. Among these discoveries, the enigmatic Bimini Road holds a prominent place. In the late 1960s, during a search for underwater treasure, divers stumbled upon an unusual underwater rock formation near Bimini Island. This formation, known as the Bimini Road or Bimini Wall, consists of a series of limestone blocks aligned in a linear pattern. The apparent precision of the formation, resembling a road or wall, immediately sparked speculation about its origin and purpose. Proponents of the Atlantis myth were quick to embrace the Bimini Road as a tangible remnant of the legendary city. They argued that the formation's layout and alignment mirrored Plato's description of Atlantis as an advanced civilization with grand architecture and infrastructure. The underwater location of the Bimini Road seemed to resonate with Plato's account of Atlantis being submerged beneath the sea. Additionally, believers pointed to the proximity of Bimini Island as the Pillars of Hercules, the mythical gateway to Atlantis described by Plato. Also, there has been much interesting and captivating analysis about Atlantis, but the latest portrayal of it in the Netflix series, Ancient Apocalypse, has caused a lot of debate. According to the author Graham Hancock, the show suggests that a long time ago, a highly advanced civilization was wiped out by massive floods caused by a huge comet crashing into Earth. This catastrophic event supposedly gave rise to the mythical tale of Atlantis. Hancock believes that after the disaster, the survivors of Atlantis scattered across the globe, which was inhabited by primitive hunter-gatherer societies at the time. These survivors supposedly shared their advanced knowledge of science, technology, agriculture, and impressive building techniques with these early societies. It is suggested that we owe our current progress and achievements to these almost divine individuals. Additionally, Hancock, who has been advocating these concepts in his books for a long time, asserts that archaeologists have intentionally concealed this notion of a widespread civilization collapse. He also criticizes mainstream academia for their defensive, arrogant, and patronizing attitudes towards these ideas. These bold assertions have propelled the series to the top of the popularity charts in both the United States and Europe. However, archaeologists have expressed their disapproval of ancient apocalypse, arguing that it lacks substantial evidence to substantiate its extravagant claims. They also criticized the show for prompting conspiracy theories disguised as scientific explanations. The ongoing debate is fascinating and brings up several questions, the most fundamental being why has the legend of Atlantis remained popular over time, in contrast to other ancient myths? What is it about this story that captivates people and keeps them interested? To find answers, we can examine the writings of authors like Tolkien, Conan Doyle, Brecht, and many science fiction writers have all been greatly inspired by the Atlantis myth. It is clear that they found the myth to be an irresistible source of inspiration for their creative works. Regarding the proposed whereabouts of the vanished civilization, various locations have been suggested, ranging from the Sahara Desert to Antarctica, with countless possibilities in between. Hancock is not the first person to propose the idea that the destruction of an advanced civilization led to the development of other cultures elsewhere. In 1882, Ignatius Donnelly, an unconventional US congressman and popular writer, 
published Atlantis, the Anti-Develian World. Donnelly argued that an immensely sophisticated and complex culture was eradicated by a flood around 10,000 years ago. He claimed that survivors from Atlantis dispersed worldwide, imparting their knowledge of farming and agriculture to other societies. Hancock introduces a new contentious perspective by suggesting that the survivors of this catastrophic flood were responsible for the impressive accomplishments of various civilizations such as Egypt, Mexico, Turkey, and Indonesia. As Flynn Dibble, an archaeologist at Cardiff University, points out, such claims perpetuate white supremacist notions by erasing the rich cultural heritage of indigenous peoples and attributing their achievements to either extraterrestrial beings or white individuals. In essence, the series promotes outdated and thoroughly discredited concepts of race science. With that, while Ancient Apocalypse proposes a destruction event dating back 12,000 years, most proponents of the alternative perspective contend that it occurred around 1630 BC, when Santorini experienced a cataclysmic volcanic eruption, one of the most violent events of its kind in human history. The volcanic eruption on Santorini was incredibly powerful, ejecting around 14 cubic miles of rock into the sky. This event caused massive tsunamis and a dense ash cloud that would have devastated the thriving Minoan civilization on Crete at that time. It was a catastrophic event that Plato, over 1,000 years later, unknowingly referred to as Atlantis. His brief description of this lost civilization would go on to have a significant and often contentious impact throughout history, resonating strongly with people. Driven by their thirst for power, this advanced society decided to wage war against all the peoples living around the Mediterranean. As expected, their powerful navy faced little opposition and successfully conquered and enslaved most of their less technologically advanced neighbors. However, their pride led them to underestimate one particular Greek city, Athens. The Anatheans not only resisted the invaders, but also managed to repel them and send them back to where they came from. In the end, the Atlanteans fell out of favor with the gods. In a single day and night, Atlantis was destroyed by a combination of a massive earthquake and flood. Once a shining example of culture and civilization, the legendary island disappeared beneath the waves, along with all of its inhabitants. Interestingly, we have a general idea of its whereabouts, believed to be the west of the Strait of Gibraltar, which we now refer to as the Pillars of Hercules. This would place the island in the Atlantic Ocean, or as the ancient Greeks call it, Atlantis the Lassa. By the 2nd century CE, the Roman historian Plutarch included the story of Atlantis in his Life of Solon. Even earlier, the geographer Strabo entertained the idea that some aspects of the story might be based on truth, suggesting that a natural catastrophe could have been the cause of Atlantis's demise. While there are only a handful of such accounts from ancient sources, Atlantis continued to captivate the minds of scholars and explorers in the centuries that followed. During the Age of Exploration, which spanned from the 15th to the 17th centuries, attention shifted towards the Americas. This led to numerous expeditions aimed at discovering evidence of a lost civilization along the Mayan, Aztec, or Incan cultures. Meanwhile, there were those that looked for traces of Atlanteans in the Middle East, Tibet, or even Antarctica. At the same time, influential thinkers of that era, such as Thomas More and Francis Bacon, envisaged utopian societies inspired by the concept of Atlantis in their famous literary works. Above all else, the story of Atlantis was a symbolic tale created by Plato to caution his fellow citizens about the potential threats to democracy. However, like many ancient myths, it likely drew inspiration from real events that were transformed into imaginative stories. For example, the collapse of the Bronze Age and the decline of the Mycenaean civilization were echoed in the legends of the Trojan War, as recounted by Homer. Similarly, the once powerful Minoan civilization found its way into myths about King Minos, the Labyrinth, and the Minotaur. These myths serve as enduring reminders of historical events that have been preserved through captivating narratives. Interestingly, the Minoan civilization that thrived on the island of Crete is often considered as a potential candidate for being Atlantis. Just like the legendary Atlanteans described by Plato, the Minoans had a powerful navy that exerted its influence across regions of Greece, the Levant, and Egypt during their peak. However, around 1611 to 1538 BCE, a volcanic island called Thera, known today as Santorini, erupted in a catastrophic event. This eruption caused enormous tsunamis that struck Crete and resulted in the destruction of the Minoan navy. However, there is another candidate that seems even more likely, and it's a tragic story that echoes the downfall of Atlantis. What's more intriguing is that this event occurred during Plato's own lifetime. 
The city-state of Heliki, situated along the shores of northern Peloponnese, held significant naval power in the region. Its sailors ventured through the Mediterranean, establishing colonies in places like Asia Minor and southern Italy. As expected for a maritime powerhouse, the city revered Poseidon as its main deity. His image was imprinted on coins, and the temple dedicated to him was second in importance only to the revered sanctuary at Delphi. The city took great pride in its magnificent bronze statue of Poseidon, which was a true work of art. Unfortunately, this statue became a harbinger of doom. When the Ionians requested a replica of this renowned statue, the people of Helicle stubbornly refused. Then, on a winter night in 373 BCE, Helicle faced a catastrophic fate, echoing the tragic destiny of its mythical counterpart. Without any warning, a massive earthquake struck Helicle, causing the entire city to sink beneath the sea. In just one night, Helicle, which was a prominent power in ancient Greece, vanished completely, along with the majority of its inhabitants. Despite an extensive rescue effort involving over 2,000 men, the bodies of the deceased and the city's vast wealth could not be recovered. For centuries, the submerged remains of Heliki remained visible, and during the time of the Roman Empire, visitors often sailed above the site, marveling at the ruins of the sunken city. However, as time passed, the area became covered in sediment, much like the legendary Atlantis, and all traces of the town disappeared. It was only in the late 20th century that the city was rediscovered. Furthermore, the Atlantean society, as gleaned from Plato's accounts and speculative extrapolation, was presumably complex and hierarchical. This structure might have been analogous to other ancient civilization, with a monarch at the apex of the societal pyramid. The monarch's authority could have stemmed from divine right, given the religious significance of the royal palace's location within the innermost circle of the city, near the Temple of Poseidon. Beneath the monarch, the society might have been stratified into nobility, priests, warriors, merchants, craftsmen, farmers, and laborers. The nobility likely consisted of royal kin and affluent families, exercising considerable influence and power. Priests, given the society's apparent religious orientation, might have had a pivotal role in Atlantean life, leading religious ceremonies, interpreting divine will, and serving as the spiritual guides for the population. The warrior class, given the account of Atlantis being a formidable power, would likely have been significant both for defensive purposes and potentially for expansionist endeavors. These warriors might have doubled as explorers or seafarers, given Atlantis's purported maritime culture. The existence of a vibrant merchant class could be inferred from the intricate trade network implied by the city's wealth. Craftsmen, responsible for the city's agricultural wonders, would have formed another crucial class. Farmers and laborers, providing sustenance and manpower, would have constituted the base of this societal structure. Based on the information provided in Plato's books, Timaeus and Critias, Atlantis had some cool stuff going on. There were gardens with both hot and cold springs, which sounds pretty refreshing. They also had areas for people to get their exercise on, public baths for everyone to enjoy, and even a special track for horse racing. In the middle of the islands, that's where all the important stuff was. That's where the government and military had their main base of operations. It's also where the fancy palaces of the ruling class were located, and they even had some temples dedicated to the gods they worshipped. Sounds like a pretty happening place. But the real showstopper was the massive statue of Poseidon inside. He was depicted standing in a chariot pulled by six winged horses. And get this, there were 50 Nereids, which were female sea spirits, riding on dolphins around him. That must have been quite a sight. Outside the temple, there were golden statues of the first 10 kings of Atlantis and their wives. They wanted to make sure everyone knew who was in charge. It's worth mentioning that in popular culture, Poseidon is often shown as the king of Atlantis. However, that's not historically accurate. In Atlantis, there were 10 kingdoms, and each kingdom belonged to one of Poseidon's sons. These kingdoms had their own independence, but they all followed a set of rules that were engraved on a column inside the Temple of Poseidon. To keep things in order, every five or six years, the kings would gather at the temple to renew their promise of loyalty to these rules. It was quite a ceremony. They would make a sacrifice and wear special robes for the occasion. They would also write their oath on golden tablets. Their oath included promises not to fight with each other and to help each other's kingdoms if they ever needed it. It was a way for the kings to show their commitment to maintaining peace and supporting one another in times of need. Plato had this idea that the people of Atlantis were pretty advanced when it came to technology. In the 20th century, some psychic readings actually supported that idea. 
These readings, done before a lot of our modern technology was even developed, describe the Atlanteans as having some serious tech skills. According to Casey, an intuitive person who did these readings, the Atlanteans had some fancy aircraft technology. They were also pretty clever when it came to communication and generating power. It's kind of mind-boggling to think how they had all these cool gadgets way back then. Here's an example that shows how advanced the technology of the Atlanteans might have been. Edgar Casey, an American psychic, once mentioned something really interesting. He said that back in those days, when people from different nations came together to protect themselves from flying creatures and wild animals, they actually used machines that were lighter than air to travel to their meetings. It suggests that the Atlanteans had some pretty incredible flying machines that defied gravity. Long ago, Atlantis faced terrible natural disasters that ultimately led to its destruction. Thankfully, some people had a sense that these disasters were imminent and managed to flee. Some of them settled in Egypt, while others made their way to South and Central America. They carried along with them their culture, customs, and traditions. By examining the similarities between Egyptian culture and the Mayan culture of the Yucatan region in Mexico, we can catch a glimpse of the early shared ancestral culture from which both civilizations originated. According to Edgar Cayce, the process of cultural exchange can be described like this. The first of the eruptions that awoke from the depth of the slow cooling earth, and that portion now near what would be termed as the Sagrasso Sea, went into the depths. With this, there again came the egress of peoples that aided or attempted to assume control, yet carrying with them all those forms of Amelius that he gained through that as for signs, for seasons, for days, for years. Hence, we find in those various portions of the world, even in the present day, some form of that as was presented by those peoples in that great development in this, the Eden of the world, that as for signs, for seasons, for days, for years. Tip for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.